Hi, I'm Deng Adut. I'm going back to school with student aid. When you were a child growing up in, in South Sudan, what kind of life did you see yourself having? You know, what, kind, what did you think would, would become of you? Maybe just following my uh, father's footsteps, become a farmer, uh, uh, keeping a bit cattle and also hunts, the Nile, crocodiles, hippopotamus, and also have a bit of, a, bit of fun uh, living the life in the village. Unfortunately, that didn't end up that way. Well, you were eventually taken away from your family at the age of six, was it? Yeah. Yeah, so when that happened and when you became a child soldier, what did you think would become of you then? Did you think, you know, this is, this is what I'm going to spend the rest of my life doing? Or did you not even know potentially how long that life would be? Oh, certainly I, I know that um, I was pretty much going to die at the time uh, when I was in the army. It's just that I didn't know the time, but almost every day is a suicide. And when you're lucky, uh, that suicidal thoughts didn't come to your mind or uh, you, somebody didn't kill you, and then you wait for another day to come. So every day you just on standby to face the reality. And um, it didn't happen to me, so, so I called myself a lucky boy, <laughs> a lucky man. Well, how, how did you get out? I, um, I was smuggled out by my brother from, from South Sudan. I was in the army and he risked everything, risking the fact that if he got caught, he could uh, face a, a firing squad. Uh, that's just in a nutshell, just for you to understand that um, death was almost haunting him. It was haunting me as well, but I'm still here. So my time haven't come yet. So tell me, when you did arrive in Australia, and, and maybe after a few weeks and months, did you feel welcome? Did you feel like this was home immediately, or did that take some time? Look, I, to be honest with you, the first six months that I was in this country, I was, I was lost. I didn't identify with anyone, not even with my own family. It was just complete isolation where you thinking about yourself, say, where the hell am I now? What am I going to do with my life? you just in a place where you are, you don't have friends, you know? Your families are also in a cultural shock. And you, you wonder, what is my next move? You, you can't, you, you, you're just not in your right mind until something, uh, happen something wonderful and that is um, you start to speak language, you start to approach people, you start to say hello and then that's when you start to know that there is a good energy there and you may, you are welcome or you, you may possibly be welcome to, to a new, uh, new place and, and those questions there, they were just all in me because uh, I, I was in different jungles. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me a bit about that culture shock, you know? So what, what are the things that you did have to kind of get used to? Um, when you, you have a visitor that's coming to your house, the first thing you got to do is just go to the fridge and try to find something for them to drink. Mm. And what happened to us, we went to our house and we have a fridge. So with everything there, everything was cold. So pick up a Coca-Cola can, too cold, put it in the microwave and bang, <laughs> bang. So <laughs> that example. And when I was in Katoomba, I was sleeping there, it was just too cold as well, put an electric blanket up, on, and I need a barbecue myself. <laughs> so, you know, you smell, you just wondering in your mind what the hell happened. Well, what was it like then to, to start going to school? It's hard, it's hard, it just, it's just hard, too hard, too extremely, extreme, and uh, I always feel so sorry for those who are quick to judge, because they just bring their own way of thinking to just a minimum level where you just can't even identify with them. Uh, imagine just starting from scratch, from a place 
that he'd never been there. How hard could that be? It's extremely hard. I, but I owed everything to those who had, um, who actually accepted me. Uh, those who uh, lend their hands and teach me and being able to go to TAFE because uh, I'm a fan of tertiary education. Uh, it's, it's a beginning. It's almost like the genesis of almost every other person, uh, whether you're a refugee or Australian, that is about to start something and then go to TAFE. Uh, they train you, they take time to teach you to correct you, and not only to correct you, but to just guide you through the jungle that I told you, because Australia is a different jungle. And learning English, uh, I think English is a hard, very hard language. Okay. And, and to be able to conform to, to the rules, and you didn't know the rules, it's quite hard. So, and, and every day, of course, every day, if you check, if you check the website, the Oxford Online, there are new words invented every day, and they're all English words. They're coming. So, a language that is evolving on daily basis, and you want to catch up with it, it just came yesterday, <laughs> you are actually swimming in wrong waters. And that is exactly how I was swimming in wrong waters. And I'm still navigating it because it's not easy and so is life that is life i think to navigate through that jungle <laughs>